Ohio and on their uh, Dayton Baptist Church is the name of the church and uh, they had with everyone there of course some other churches came they had 60, 60 people there on the uh, third night so praise the Lord for that and, uh, and the great work that they're doing there and the churches they're planting then our family the Perez family the Uruguay they've been very busy and uh and so we need to continue to pray for the Perez family. They've had summer camps, uh, church anniversary, missionary conference. They've been constructing a, uh, one of the church buildings and uh, just lots of other things. They're getting ready. They're going to start a Christian school at their church. And so just lots of stuff for those folks, you know. Praise the Lord for the Perez family. So we just praise the Lord for the missionaries that we support here at Liberty Baptist Church. Now, I told you. Something had to be funny about the offering on Sunday, and they only, they they left one of the bags in in the office there, and so so after the service that night, they went in there, found the other bag, and so that's why the offering's higher <laughs> than what it was Sunday. <laughs> so I've been getting apologies all the rest of the week. Every day I've been getting apologies. We won't let that happen again, Pastor. Well, good. <laughs> Praise the Lord for that. Uh, brother Peter, why don't you lead us in a word of prayer for the offering tonight, brother? Thank and thank the Lord that they found the other bag back there. You know it. If you would, stand with me as we sing When We All Get to Heaven, uh, page 533 in your hymnals. We're sing the first and the fourth verse. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the legends bright and blessed, he'll prepare us a place.
Thank you. I hear the Savior say Thy strength indeed is small Child of weakness, watch and pray Find in me thy all in all Jesus paid it all Stay, he washed it white as snow yeah. on a hill far away. Stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. <coughs> and I love. the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners were slain so I cherish the old rugged cross to my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. And when before the throne I stand in him complete, Jesus died my soul to save My lips shall still repeat Jesus paid it all All to him I owe Sin had left a crimson stain He washed it white as snow so I cherish the old rugged cross To my trophies at last I lay down Sin had left the crimson stain He washed it white as snow Okay, one of the things that we do here at Liberty Baptist Church, we give God all the glory, don't we, for the singing? That's why we don't act like that, boys and girls. We're not going to do that again, are we? We give God the glory when we sing here. That's why we, when we, we have singing, you know, every so often somebody will applaud, but we don't do that. We don't do that because this is not entertainment. This is praising the Lord, Amen. Okay, that's my sermon one. We don't act like that. I'm not going to be hollering and hooting. This is not a basketball game or anything like that. This is the church. <clears throat> Proverbs 24. Proverbs 24. Well, young people need to be taught. Proverbs 24, and we're going to look at verses 19 and 20 tonight. Let's stand as we read the Word of God tonight. The 
Bible says, Fret not thyself because of evil men, neither be thou envious at the wicked. For there shall be no reward to the evil man. The candle of the wicked shall be put out. God does not want us to fret over evil people, evil doers. There are all kinds of evil doers out there, and sometimes it's very easy to fret over their wickedness, but God does not want us to fret over evil doers at all. And sometimes we have a tendency to do that, and that's what this passage that we're looking at, this proverb that we're looking at tonight, that's the theme. God does not want us to fret over evil doers. And he gives us reasons why we're not going to fret over evil doers, why we should not fret over evildoers. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Father, I pray that you would bless the preaching of the Word of God. I pray, Father, that you would uh, teach us from the Word of God that, Father, we shouldn't be envious or jealous of evil people, or wicked people, Father. Even though it seems like they're prospering, it seems like things just always go well for them, but we know that they don't. But in, uh, in spite of that, we still, many people still, envy them and they're jealous over them but help us to see why we should not be jealous of them why we should not envy them father help us not to fret over them and father i pray that the teenagers that are in here tonight father would uh, have this uh, understand this truth is taught here in the word of god because many times uh, in our youth uh, we are jealous or uh, envious over what someone else has or what they do or what they can do. And Father, help us to realize that you don't want us to fret about any of those things. And then, dear Lord, if there's one that needs salvation tonight, I pray that you would save them. Bless the preaching of the Word of God, and I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I was reading a story about this young woman who was jealous when she heard that her ex-boyfriend was not only dating uh, another young woman, but he had already gotten engaged to her. And she was so jealous. Well, she met her in the store. And she, all she wanted to do, she was so jealous. You know how people get jealous and envious that she just wanted to, she wanted to say something to her to... Uh, just uh, hurt her some way. And so she went up to this young woman who was now engaged to her ex-boyfriend, and uh, she said, I hear that you're engaged to my ex-boyfriend. And the other young woman said, well, I'm engaged to him. And uh, then the first girl said, well, did you know that, uh, he, had, uh, that he was once, uh, he asked me to marry him? And the other girl said, well, no, I, I didn't know that. But he did tell me that there were some things in his background that he was ashamed of, but I never asked him what they were. God does not want us to fret over evildoers. You know, it's easy to get angry when you see the wicked people in the world, isn't it? When you see them and it looks like they're prospering, sometimes it's easy to get angry at them. We see how I, there's some stories on the news in just the last few weeks, you know, some uh, wealthy individuals and how they seem to have gotten away with some things. And, and uh, it's easy to get angry and even fret over those things. And it's tempting to be jealous and to be envious over people, uh, evil people that seem to be prospering, seem to, like they don't have any problems, some of them. But we know that they do, but they seem to act like that, that they don't. But uh, God has given us some advice here in this passage of Scripture that we need to uh, adhere to. The godly advice is this. You ready for it? Ignore it all. <laughs> Just ignore it all. When you see that going on, don't get mad. Don't get tempted to be jealous. You know what? Just ignore it. Just ignore it. That's the truth that this passage teaches us. God doesn't want us to fret over evildoers. He gives us three reasons why we do, don't need to fret over evildoers. Number one, because the righteous must not fret. Look at verse number 19. 
Fret not thyself because of evil men, neither be thou envious at the wicked. You, you might take note of the word fret and envious. They're the same word in the Hebrew. They're the very same word. What does it mean? It means to be jealous. Don't fret. Don't be envious. In other words, don't be jealous of those wicked individuals. Why? Because uh, we're Christians and we shouldn't. Amen? I mean, God doesn't want us as believers to fret over those individuals. But people get jealous. They see the rock stars and they see the movie stars and they see the sports stars and they see the big polit big name politicians. They see all of those things go go on, going on and they seem like they don't have any problems. They don't seem like they don't have any difficulties. But my friend, they do. But the greatest problem is yet to come and that's when they face God Almighty. Amen? <laughs> They're going to have some big problems then. One big problem. God doesn't want us to fret. He doesn't want us to be envious. He doesn't want us to be jealous of evil doers. I was reading a story that I came across the other day, and it was an interesting story. It took place many years ago, 1975 actually. I don't watch these things, but I thought this was very interesting. These names that were very popular in the names back then, these country uh, music stars. There was a fellow by the name of Charlie Rich. I don't know if you ever heard of that guy. I don't know if he's still alive even, but uh, back in 1975, they had these awards. They were having the country music awards, and they were, uh, Charlie uh, Rich was the one that was going to hand out this award for the country artist of the year. You know how they, they stand up there and they announce that and somebody brings them one of these envelopes and then they open the envelope out up and they read the name of the person. Now, that year, the winner of the award for Country Artist of the Year was a guy by the name of John Denver. I don't know if you ever heard of that guy. But he was to be the winner. Now, what's interesting is Charlie Rich did not like him. Now, he didn't know that he was going to win the award. He stood up there. This is on live TV. He's standing there. He announces the next award will be the country artist of the year. The envelope, please. They bring him the envelope. He opens the envelope up. This is on live TV. Thousands of people are watching. He opens the envelope, takes the, uh, the name out, and when he sees the name, John Denver, he doesn't read it. He holds it there in his hand. This is, this, real, this is what happened. He reached in his pocket, got out his lighter, and, and, and caught it on fire right there on nationwide TV in front of thousands of people and burned it up, threw it to the ground, and walked off the stage. Isn't that the most terrible thing that you ever heard in your life? I thought, wow. Wow. Now, that is jealousy, amen? That's being envious. I thought, wow, if there's ever an illustration of being jealous and envious, that was it. That guy was really fretting, wasn't he? Walked right off. I thought, wow, for someone to do something like that. But, you know, sometimes we get jealous and sometimes we fret, don't we? And we get envious over individuals. Someone gets a new car. Someone gets a new outfit. Someone gets some new uh, a teenage. Someone gets some, some new tennis shoes. I mean, something. Somebody gets something new, and we fret, and we je and we're jealous, and we're envious of what they have. God doesn't want us to fret. He doesn't want us to fret, especially over evildoers. First of all, God doesn't want us to fret over evildoers because the righteous must not fret. If you're righteous, if you know Christ is talking about the believer here. If you know Christ is your Savior, you ought not fret. Amen? Number one, because you're, you live righteously. Number two, because the evildoers have no future hope. Look at verse number 20, the first part of it. For there shall be no reward to the evil man, because the evildoer has no future hope. The word reward there, for there shall be no reward to the evil man. They have no reward in, fu in the future, they have no future reward, no future hope. Evildoers, they have nothing to look forward to. All they have is what they have right now. My friend, 
in eternity, they will be separated from God for all eternity. They only have what they have right now and nothing more. Sometimes we don't think about those things. We look at them, we see uh, their prosperity, we see their wealth, we see their fame, we see their power. We look and see what they have and we don't think about, you know what? One day they're going to be separated from God for all eternity. For all eternity. All they have is what they have right now. They have no future hope. You know what the Bible says about what we have right now? If this were all that we had, he says we're most miserable. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 19. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men uh, most miserable. If all we have is if all we have is what we have here in this life, we're most miserable. Those people, that's all they have. But my friend, for the Christian, we don't have just what we have here, but we're looking for all eternity. Amen? We've got heaven. We've got all eternity. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for all eternity. We're looking for Christ to come. He's prepared a place for us in John 14, 2. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. He is preparing a place. He's coming back again. We like to sing that song. I like to sing that song. We haven't sung it here in a while. Some golden daybreak. Some golden daybreak, Jesus will come. Some golden daybreak, uh, the battle's all won. He'll shout the victory, break through the blue. Some golden daybreak for me, for you. <laughs> Christ is coming back again. We have that to look forward to. Many people live in dread of the undertaker. We as believers live in hope of the coming upper taker. In Acts 1, 11, the angel stood there as Jesus ascended into heaven. The disciples were there. In Acts 1, 11, he's, he said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. It gives us hope. We know that Jesus Christ is coming back again. Amen? doesn't matter how dreary your day may be today or tomorrow or the next day. We know that Christ is coming back again. It gives us a hope. gives us something to look forward to. God hasn't told us everything about heaven, has he? We study it. We can look at all the verses. But we don't know everything about heaven. You know why? I think if God gave us, showed us everything about heaven, we'd want to go there today, amen? <laughs> we just want to skip everything else and just go there. I thought about an illustration of that. It would be kind of like a boy sitting at the dinner table eating uh, spinach with a chocolate cake sitting across from him. I mean, it'd be hard to eat that spinach when you got a chocolate cake over there, you know what? <laughs> Listen, uh, I mean, if God showed us everything about heaven, we wouldn't even want to be here. I uh, guess heaven is so great, and heaven is so wonderful, and we're looking forward to heaven. God doesn't want us to fret over evildoers because the righteous must not fret. Secondly, because the evildoers have no uh, future hope. And then one more reason, because the evildoers will be snuffed out by the Lord. Look at verse 20 in the second part of the verse. The candle of the wicked shall be put out. When the evildoers die, when the unsaved die, the Bible tells us they're going to be separated from God for all eternity. And that's what he's talking about. The candle of the wicked shall be put out. They're going to be snuffed out, just like a light will be snuffed out. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 9, the Bible says, The light of the righteous rejoices, but the lamp of the wicked shall be put out. In Proverbs 20, 20. Whoso curseth his father or his mother, his lamp shall be put out in obscure darkness. It doesn't mean annihilation. There are some people that believe in annihilation, that when a person dies, that's the end of everything. But my friend, it's not the end. Listen, boys, listen. When a person dies without the Lord Jesus Christ, they're going to live for all eternity in hell without end. The Conscious punishment of the lost. That's what the Bible teaches. That's why people need to know Christ as their Savior. They'll be separated from God for all eternity. Luke chapter 16, it gives us the true story of the rich man and Lazarus. And we know that's a true story. It's not just a parable because they use proper names there. In any parable, they don't use proper names. But this, uh, this is a true story because we have the name of Lazarus. We know that Lazarus went to heaven and we know that the rich man went to hell my friend they were separated and they'll be separated for all eternity those without Christ be separated for all eternity a lot of people think that 
they'll die, they say, well, I'm going to have plenty of company there in hell. I'm afraid not. I believe that they'll be by themselves for all eternity. There won't be a big party. There won't be a big gang, but they'll be separated for all eternity. And separated from God and separated from one another. God doesn't want us to fret over evildoers, does he? He doesn't want us to fret over them. Psalm 37, if you want to turn over to Psalm 37, I want to look at that because David discusses in, at length about fretting here. In fact, he talks and tells us not to fret three times in this passage in Psalm 37, in verse 1, verse 7, and verse 8. Three times he tells us not to fret. Verse number 1, he says, Fret not thyself because of evildoers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. Verse number 7, he says, Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Verse number 8, Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. Three times he says, Don't fret, don't fret, don't fret. Don't fret, don't be envious. Don't be jealous of individuals. People have a jealousy in, in young people. I, when I was a youth pastor many years ago, I would see that I would have teenagers in my youth group. They were jealous of other teenagers in the youth group. You know, They would be jealous and envious about them, about things that they wore uh, or their shoes or uh, things that they had. Uh, and then uh, I'd have a teenager get a car and all the other teenagers would be jealous because they had a car and they didn't have one, you know. I mean, but you know it's wrong. doesn't matter what you're jealous about. It doesn't matter what you're envious about. It's still wrong, amen? It's wrong. It's wrong. And he said, don't fret about it. In fact, I like what he says, you know, just ignore it. Just go on, amen? <laughs> don't get angry. Don't get upset. Now, it's interesting, he tells us three times not to fret in this passage, but he gives us a number of recommendations, a number of recommendations, six different recommendations. Look at that passage. You may want to mark them down in verse number three. First of all, he says, trust in the Lord and do good. Instead of fretting, you need to trust in the Lord and do good. Amen. Trust God. God is good. Amen. Trust in the Lord and do good. Sometimes we get mad and we get upset. We don't want to do good. Listen, we need to do good. Amen. God will bless us for that. So, number one, instead of fretting, trust in the Lord and do good. Number two, look at verse number four. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Listen, if you'll delight in the Lord, the Bible says that he'll even give us the, uh, the desires of our heart. Delight yourself in the Lord. Listen, rather than fretting about what somebody else has, rather than being jealous uh, rather than being envious about what somebody else has or what they've done or, or, or what they have, rather than do that, he says, listen, delight yourself in the Lord. Let's rejoice in the Lord. Amen. Isn't God good? God is good, isn't he? He is good. Delight in the Lord. Man, God is so good to us. God is so good. Delight yourself in the Lord rather than fretting, rather than being jealous, rather than being envious. Number three, look at verse number five. Commit your way unto the Lord. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Commit your way to the Lord. In other words, I'm going to do what God wants me to do. I'm going to do God's will in my life. Commit your way to the Lord. Rather than being envious, rather than being jealous, rather than fretting, commit your way to the Lord. God will bring it to pass. The Bible says God will meet your needs. God always meets your needs. Number four, rest in the Lord. In verses 6 and 7. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, he says. Rest in the Lord. Sometimes we get worn out, don't we? You know, the best thing to do is take the word of God and just read the word of God and pray and rest in the Lord. That'll give you, that'll give you rest. That'll help you to recover. We think of all these other things and we forget about the Lord. When you've had a fast-paced day, the best thing you can do, take the Word of God. Just read a few passages from the Word of God. Pray, meditate on it. Man, you'll rest. Amen? You can rest in the Lord. The Lord will give you rest. Rather than fretting, why not rest in the Lord? <laughs> That's what we ought to do. Number five, 
wait patiently for the Lord. Look at uh, verse number 7, the second part of the verse. He says, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Wait on the Lord. Wait patiently on the Lord. That's one of our biggest problems, isn't it? Waiting patiently on the Lord. We want it today, don't we? We want it right now. I saw on the news a couple of weeks ago that somebody went into one of these fast food places and they didn't get his food fast enough. And man alive, he, was, he went berserk in that place because they didn't give it to him fast enough. I thought, man alive, it's a fast food place. <laughs> How fast do you want it, you know? <laughs> Wanted to throw it to you when you're going out the door? What do you want? Wait patiently for the Lord. Number six, in verse number eight, cease not, cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. What he's saying there is stop being angry over evil and evildoers before you act wrongly. Listen, if you continue to be envious and jealous and continue to fret, you might do something that you're going to regret. People do that all the time. They get, they're upset. Uh, because this evildoer has been prospered some way, and they, then they go and they do something and, or say something that they regret later on. Stop your fretting. Stop your jealousy. Stop your envy. Evildoers are going to be snuffed out by the Lord. That's what the Bible says. Don't worry about it. We see the evildoers. All you got to do is turn the news on. You see it every night, don't you? <laughs> you wonder, what's going to happen? Listen, don't worry about it. God will take care of them. Amen? God is a sovereign God. God is in charge. God will bless you, and God will take care of the evil. Amen? He will. We just need to trust in Him. He is a sovereign God. This morning, I was a bit anxious about something. And I sat back, and I said, Lord, you're in charge. You just take care of that thing. And I'm telling you what peace he gave to me for the rest of the day. You know what? <laughs> I said, like, if it come back to me, and it will. The devil's going to bring it back to you, isn't he? I would just say, the Lord's taking care of that. The Lord's taking care of that because he's a sovereign God, isn't he? He'll take care of it. He'll take care of you. If you'll trust in Him, trust in Him. He'll take care of you. We need to send up high and take it to the Lord, and He'll take that fretting away from us. He'll take that jealousy. He'll take that envy away from us. Years ago, when at the beginning of aviation here in this country, they decided that they wanted to see if they could fly a plane around the world. And this was in the early days of aviation. And so they got the plane ready. These are the pioneering days. They got the plane ready. And the pilot took off. He was flying. He had been flying for two hours. He'd taken off, he's flying for two hours. All of a sudden, while he's in that plane, he heard a gnawing noise. There was a gnawing noise. And it sounded like it was coming out of the engine compartment. Something was in there gnawing. And he thought, that must be a rat. A rat must have gotten into that engine and must be gnawing on something in there. Now you got wires in there, you got cables in there, those old planes had cables, you know, you got fuel lines in there. He's flying this plane and he hears this gnawing noise up there <laughs> and he thought, I'm not going to make it. The next, uh, the next airport, the next place where he was going to land the plane was two hours away. He could go two hours forward or two hours back he thought, I'm not going to make it to either one of those places. Because he said something's gnawing on something. He didn't know what it was, but he knew that there was something gnawing on something inside that plane. Could have been a cable, could have been a, a gas line, some kind of electric cable, I don't know. 
He didn't know what it was. Can you imagine you're flying up there and something's gnawing away? There's no place to land the plane. And so he decided, he knew this. He said, if that's a rodent, if that's a rat in there, he said, they don't do well in altitude. And so he began to fly that plane high. He went up 1,000 feet, 2,000 feet. He actually flew that plane up 20,000 feet. When he said, he said, when he got up to 20,000 feet, he quit hearing the gnawing noise. <laughs> Figured that rodent had died. It was too high. So he flew that plane to the next landing area. First thing he did was lift the covers for the engine, and they found a dead rodent in there. It had been gnawing on the cables in that engine. <laughs> but it was dead. And I thought of that story, and I thought, you know, fretting is like that rodent. Just like that rodent. It can't live in the secret places of the Most High. If we'll ascend to the Lord in prayer, then, my friend, that envy will not live. Amen? It cannot live. So if we have a problem with envy, and we have a problem with jealousy, and fretting. You know what? We take that to the Most High. We take that to the Lord, and He'll take that from us. Amen? That's where we need to go. We can go there tonight. Let's bow our heads, every head bowed, every eye closed. And we're going to go there tonight. God does not want us to fret over evildoers. He's given us some reasons here, because the righteous must not fret. If you're righteous, if you're a believer, then you should not fret. Because the evildoers have no future hope, they don't have any hope. All they have is what they have right now. Because the evildoers will be snuffed out by the Lord, the Lord is going to take care of them. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed, and no one's looking around. Let me ask you, are you fretting over evildoers? Are you jealous of them? Would you say, you know what, I, I fretted, I've been jealous, I've been envious, and God has spoken my heart tonight. Pastor, would you pray for me tonight? Would you pray for me tonight? I need to get some of those things right with the Lord. I need to take them to the Lord Tonight, Would you pray for me tonight? Would you slip your hand up all through the building? Say, I've, I've fretted. I, I've been envious. I've been jealous. Would you pray for me tonight? All through the building. Raise your hands up. Amen. All through the building. Amen. All through the building. Listen, if we'll take, those to, take that to the Lord, my friend, he can take care of that for us. I'm going to pray for you. But in just a moment, when we pray and we have the invitation, I'll invite you to pray. I invite you to turn that over to the Lord because, my friend, it can't survive. It can't survive when you take it to the Lord in prayer. Then there's one more question I need to ask you tonight. Do you need to trust in Christ for the gift of eternal life? Is, are you here tonight and you're not sure that you have the gift of eternal life? You know, if you don't have the gift of eternal life, one day you'll be separated from God for all eternity. Eternal, the eternal conscious punishment of the lost, what the Bible teaches, that's what hell is. And you don't want to go there. You want to make sure that you're on your way to heaven. You'd say he, tonight, Pastor, I can't say 100% that I know that I'm on my way to heaven. Would you pray for me tonight? Would you slip your hand up and put it back down? You say, I can't say 100% for sure that I know that I'm on my way to heaven. Could I pray for you tonight? Would you slip your hand up? Put it back down. Anyone here tonight? Maybe tonight you know someone who's jealous. They're always envious. They're always talking about other people. They're always jealous of them. They're always fretting. Say, I know. I've got a friend. Or I, I know an acquaintance. I have an acquaintance. And they're always fretting over someone. They're always fretting. They're always jealous. They're always envious. And I'm going to pray for them tonight. Would you pray with me, Pastor? I know someone. And I'm going to pray for them tonight. Would you pray with me? Slip your hands all through the building. I know some that they're fretting all the time, all the time, all the time. And I'm going to pray for them. Would you pray with me? Thank you very much. Amen. Amen. You know, God doesn't want us to fret. God doesn't want us to be envious or jealous. I'm going to have a word of prayer. Then we'll have the invitation. We'll invite you to come. You can come to the altar here tonight. You can come to this altar and you can pray and ask the Lord to help you, to deliver you from fretting and from envy. And from jealousy, dear Lord, thank you for the word of God.
Thank you for this proverb that we've looked at tonight. And you, do, you do not want us to fret over evildoers. And Father, I pray that we wouldn't. You've seen the hands of the people here tonight. They fret. They, they, they're jealous. They're envious. It's a problem that we have. And dear Lord, I pray that you'll take it from us. I believe if we'll take it to you, dear Lord, you can deliver us from this sin. Father, there are many here tonight that are asking for help. And I'm praying that you'll help them tonight and deliver them from fretting, from envy, from jealousy. And then, dear Lord, there are some that raised their hands here tonight and said, you know, I've got friends or acquaintances. They're always fretting over something or someone. They're always jealous. They're always envious. Oh, dear Lord, we pray for them that they would see their way. They would see that you don't want us to fret. You don't want us to be envious. You don't want us to be jealous. Dear Lord, deliver them. Now be with this invitation, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand to your feet. God spoke into your heart. Why don't you come as we begin to sing this invitation? You come right now. Oh, to Jesus I surrender. 